different costumes and they would then we would do all this all of these type of acts and they would be break dancing and training in my backyard and then on Fridays and Saturdays I would then load them in my car we would pack in and I would go to all of the clubs in Baltimore City I would knock on the door I would talk to whoever the um the, per the owner, and I would tell them I can present them with a show. They don't have to pay me. We just needed to, them to let us in. We would perform, and then we pass the hat at the end. So we would come in, and I would have all our costumes, and we would have um, army fatigue on. So I would have these little shorts with like a little army fatigue hat, little banner, bandana or something. And we would come in, and uh, we would uh, go on the floor, clear the floor, the dance floor, and I would have them with all different costumes and they would go on the floor and then they would dance and they would break dance and they would, uh, they would present a great show. And then afterwards, they would come while, they, you know, we got the crowd real hype. They would all grab a hat and walk around and everybody would put money in their, in their hat. And we might make maybe close to, out of one show, maybe about $100. And then we would jump in the car and I would go to the next club and the next club, and it was clubs like Odell's, the Gatsby's, 20 Grand, um, Pharaoh's. Um, so not only did we do that every weekend, well, we would, at the end of the day, we may, we may have about $350, so I would pay all of them, and it would be two o'clock in the morning, and we we're, were just pulling up, and I'm dropping kids off, and of course, some of their parents are not even home yet, you know, so um, it was good to have the kids because it was keeping them off the streets and the kids were, they were really good dancers. So we started um, also, you know, they were starting to rap, things like that. But um, then we would go and we compete. So they had different uh, groups that were out here. So were you working at the time? So at the time, yes, I was working for my father, my dad, uh, Leroy Hawkins on Greenmount 21st Street. So I worked in my dad's bar. So we would, uh, I would go to work, I'd go to school, and then we would, uh, you know, we practice in my backyard. And um, so the kids, they did well. They was good. It was good. So finally, we did the halftime show for LL Cool J. So I was, that was it. I was like, we made it, y'all. We is going to New York. We going everywhere. So um, we, uh, it was at the 5th Regiment Army. And um, it was a big show with LL Cool J, like, I think Ty T might have been in that show, but it was a really big show. But the halftime show was our act, which they did really good. So we were then trying to follow their tour. And um, so some of the kids, they start getting growing up a little, they start getting in trouble. <clears throat> and then uh, I met my, um, my husband and <clears throat> Sorry guys, I'm hot. <laughs> so I met my husband and uh, I got pregnant with Brittany. And then that's when my career ended. <clears throat> I'm sorry, we just came from a trip. So I need some water. <clears throat> okay. So I got pregnant with Brittany. And then that's when I realized I wanted to be a really good mom. And I stopped everything. And I got in church and I raised my children. <clears throat> Sorry. And I worked for the telephone company and uh, for many years. And then one day, God let me know that I wanted to start my own business. And that was in 1995. And that's when I started God's Little Angels Learning Center. And then from there, I, you know, I did everything as far as the children. God said he was pleased that we were teaching the kids about him and giving them a good education. And so my first center was on Daywater Avenue. That was actually my first house. And I, what I did was I changed the house into a daycare center. So I moved out of the house and I created my own daycare center uh, there. And that was the first. And then in 2000, I opened up a center located inside Gardenville Elementary School. So I had two locations and we started also transportation. 
So my husband was doing transportation, I was doing daycare, and we were transporting kids to and from school throughout the Sedonia area. So well, we were not only transporting our kids, I went to all of the daycare providers in town or your area and asked them did they need transportation. If their parents needed transportation to take their kids to school, tell them to call me. So we created a transportation company and it was called GLA uh, Transportation. And we uh, transported kids back and forth to all of the schools. So in 2000, <clears throat> I went into Gardner Elementary School and they had a summer program with about 30 kids and an after school program. So when the owner decided to leave Gardner Elementary School, I came in and spoke with the principal. They had already known about us because we were already transporting kids to their location and they knew that we were transporting kids from their location to my daycare center. So I wound up getting, uh, I put in for the, um, <clears throat> it was like a contract and I was able to get it. <clears throat> He's going to be coughing too. <laughs> so, um, once I won the contract for Garza Elementary School, my first summer, I, I put out, we, my first summer, once I put out all of my flyers, we started with 160 kids, my first summer. And we transported those kids to roller skating one day, bowling the next day, laser tag the next day, um, mm, go-kart riding the next day and swimming. So every day we took them on a trip. So it just grew and grew and we became really known to have great summer programs, great after school programs up at Gardeville. So every year we would have like almost 200 kids. And then in 2003, I opened up in Rosedale, which is across the street. And I had um, the daycare there, Gardeville location and Daywalt location. <clears throat> but I, what I realized that I really wanted to um, start a private Christian school. So I hired someone to come in and help me. And um, I opened up GLA Academy School of Excellence in 2003. I got certified from for kindergarten through 12th grade. So I had the daycare center on one side and the school on the other side. And then in 2005, I opened up in this building, 16 classrooms. I closed Daywalk, I closed Gardeville, and I closed the one across the street. And I housed everyone in this building. And then in 2009, I realized that I had so many students, I needed to uh, remove the school out of the building. And I opened up GLA Academy School of Excellence across the parking lot. And there I had 14 classrooms over here and 16 classrooms over here. And uh, we continued to do transportation. And in 2009, because my goal was to have the first black woman in Baltimore with a school of the arts. So my goal was to open up a school of the arts. So what I made sure I needed, first thing I needed to do was I had to perfect <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> Why you said about like that? Get a chip right there. No.